Hey what's up y'all, I'm back with another video. As an average mog pilled farm cell, I've always wondered, is it possible to manipulate my drop rates? Is it possible to increase the chance that I obtain those high ticket items that every player wants but never gets? Of course, I wanted to stay within the bounds of legitimacy and didn't want to use any exploits, and my research led me to one item, the talisman of true treasure tracking. Now I know the item doesn't provide any visible buffs, all the comments on the Wowhead article claiming that it helped them get the mounts they wanted being downvoted to oblivion, and it generally seeming like no more than snake oil, but I wanted to put the item to the test myself. In this video, I'm going to be trying 4 different gold farms with and without the talisman in order to find the answer out for myself. That aside, let's just get right into it. Now, acquiring the talisman is pretty easy. You're going to want to head to this part of Shatcheth City and talk to this esteemed blue gentleman, unassumingly named Grifta. Surprisingly, the neck piece is only going to set you back about 28 gold. Now, while this may not seem like a lot, after doing some quick math to account for inflation, this would have been equivalent to around 1,400 gold back in 2006 when the item was introduced, which is still nothing, especially for someone with deep pockets such as myself. Now that we've acquired the neck piece, we can get into the farms. Now, the first farm that I wanted to cover was the mana tombs, seeing as most of the mobs around the instance have a 5% chance to drop ethereum prison keys, making a pretty good gauge to test if my luck was truly increased or not depending on the amount of keys dropped. Running the instance 5 times without the neck took me around 13 minutes, yielding me 27 keys. I also looted 1,129 items, including 2 pieces worth between 1 and 5,000 gold. All in all, the total item value that I looted without the neck was around 14.5 thousand gold, which is a pretty decent rate of just over 1,000 gold per minute. Running the instance 5 times with the neck, however, took me around 12 and a half minutes, just about the same time, and yielded me 29 keys, which isn't much of a difference. That being said, however, I looted 925 items in total, over 200 less, of which I looted 5 pieces of gear worth between 1 and 5,000 gold, as well as one item worth just slightly over. The notable pieces I looted while running the instance with the neck equipped were the Anzac Dagger, which lists for around 3,500 gold on my realm, as well as the design for the Eye of the Night, a rare quality pattern that lists for just slightly over 5,000 gold on average across US realms. In total, the item value that I was able to loot with the talisman equipped was just slightly over 25,000 gold, or just over 2,000 gold per minute, which is a much more significant rate than without it. That being said, however, I wouldn't get my hopes up quite yet, as while finding more luck with transmog drops is nice, the fixed drop rate on the ethereum prison keys remained just about the same, meaning that there wasn't truly enough of a difference to matter, at least in my opinion. For the next farm, I truly wanted to get into the realm of random by going to one of my all-time transmog farming locations located here in the Stone Talon Mountains. This personally is a spot that I'll farm once or twice a year for extremely high ticket inventory and I usually don't see any competition with my lists, meaning that I'm able to bloat the prices of items pretty easily, allowing me to make significant quote unquote undercuts to make easy sales off of suckers that think they're getting a bargain. Farming my usual route for 30 minutes without the talisman yielded me slightly over 160,000 gold in looted item value, which is pretty typical of the farm for me. Of the 497 items that I looted, I was able to acquire 13 items of value, the most notable of which being the Slayer's Cape, which I was actually able to make a sale for while editing the video for around 35,000 gold on my realm. Now, doing the farm with the talisman equipped was an entirely different story and a pretty new experience as I'd never seen a number on my loot appraiser so obscenely high in my entire life. 30 minutes of running the same route yielded me over 1.3 million gold in looted item value. For some unknown reason, I was not able to loot nearly twice as many items as I did without the talisman, but I was also able to loot over 3 times as many valuable pieces of transmog as I was without it. You can just boil it down to getting lucky and call me superstitious, but in my 6 or 7 years of taking a biannual pilgrimage to kill the grim totems out here, I had never seen raids like this. Some of the more notable items that I was able to loot include the Sanguine Armor, which is currently listing for around 90,000 gold in my realm, 
The Wicked Chain Cloak, which is currently averaging a solid 160,000 gold across all US realms. The Spike Chain Leggings, which is seeing lists for around the same price as the Wicked Chain Cloak and the Thick Scale Cloak, which is listing for a quarter of a million gold on average across all US realms. Like I said, you can boil it down to getting lucky and write it off as superstition, but there has to be some degree of fact present here. For the next farm, I wanted to stray away from transmog farming and see how the talisman would affect a gathering farm, and figured what better farm than arcane crystals here in Swamp of Sorrows. For the uninformed, arcane crystals are an uncommon quality gem worth around 300 gold, primarily used for transmuting arcanite bars, which are a required reagent for the sulfuron hammer. Flying around the zone for 20 minutes without the talisman yielded an unimpressive 2000 gold in value from 4 arcane crystals out of 430 items looted, which is a pretty low rate even by normal means. That being said, however, farming with the talisman yielded me a pretty solid 7,200 gold in value from an impressive 19 arcane crystals out of 517 items looted. Like I said earlier, I'm not saying the talisman had anything to do with my luck while farming, but it is what it is. Statistically speaking, of course, from the around 250 ore that I gathered between both sessions, I should have had around 12 or 13 crystals meaning that I may just have gone unlucky my first few laps around, and pretty lucky my second time. The last farm I wanted to test the talisman against is a certified gold slop classic, being none other than Oldaman. Now, I decided that much like the mana tombs, I would run the instance 5 times with and without the talisman to judge my luck, hoping that my superstitions would be confirmed or debunked. After running the instance for 5 minutes without the talisman, I was able to loot around 19,000 gold in looted item value, including 7 pieces worth between 1 and 5,000 gold out of 553 total items looted. Unfortunately, I was not able to loot anything worth any more, but that's just how it goes when farming transmog. That being said, running the instance 5 times with the talisman actually yielded similar results. Around 26,000 gold in looted item value, including another 7 pieces worth between 1 and 5,000 gold out of 594 total items looted, with the added bonus of the Spirewind Fetter, a blue quality chest piece worth around 6,000 gold on my server. All in all, I wouldn't attribute the difference in looted values between the two runs to the talisman itself, seeing as the values easily could have been flipped by the one item dropping during either 5 sessions. But who knows, maybe it really works. In the end, my opinion on the talisman is still pretty indecisive. It seemed to work in open world farms between the Swamp of Sorrows and Northwatch Expedition base camp, but seemed to not affect either my mana tombs or Oldaman farms, making it pretty hard to draw a solid line. I do think that the belief that the talisman affects drop rates can be written off as superstition still, but who really knows without a blue post confirming whether it's true or not. If you have an opinion and feel like sharing it, cool. I don't really care, but feel free to leave a comment below about it. But make sure to do it in Chinese since it'd be pretty funny. Anyways y'all, thanks for watching. I hope that this video felt informative, and I hope you enjoyed the more investigative journalism type video, kind of similar in style to the AI gold farming video that I made a few months back. Videos like these are always hard to make, not because the content is challenging or anything, but because if I force myself to run Old Man anymore, I may end up in the newspaper. Like I've been saying in the past bunch of videos, my Discord server is officially open, and if you're interested in joining, there's a link to a short PowerPoint presentation where you can learn about my guild and myself with the link at the end. Anyways, with that all being said, as always, peace.